Hey, g'day everyone. Welcome to a, another Bush Creek fly tying tutorial. So uh, in this uh, in this video, what we're going to be doing is this pattern, which is my silky scud. I say scud, it's probably not necessarily uh, strictly a gamaris pattern, but it, uh, it could be used for that. And it's probably good for freshwater shrimp too, um, or any of those sorts of some very small crustaceans. Uh, it's a pretty straightforward pattern to tie. It's not terribly complex, but there's a few steps involved in this. So uh, you'll just have to bear with me. Um, but uh, the effect it creates is pretty, uh, pretty good. Um, it, you get a nice drop because it's a nice smooth body, but uh, this, the silk in here um, really sort of holds the water and gives really good effect of legs and stuff like that. So without uh, further ado, we'll get on into it. So this particular fly here is tied on a Dahuku 644. This one's a 14. For the demo today, uh, what I'll be using is a 644 in size 12. And to that I've added about 15 turns of uh, 0.20 of an inch lead. Now clearly you can uh, make this as heavy or as light as you want. You could even emit all the lead all together and just do the body. Um, if you want a bit of weight, lead's the way to do. So it's about 15 turns and I've, and as you can see, I've sort of positioned this towards the bend of the hook, not completely all the way around, but towards the bend of the hook, giving me some space at the front there behind the eye. So after you've uh, added in your lead, the next step is to do the body. And for this body, I'm using um, this stuff, stretch nylon, woolly nylon. Um, this stuff is actually overlocker thread. Uh, and I use this a lot, um, but uh, stretch nylon. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to come in and catch that in in front of the, the lead. And then just in open turns, I'm just going to catch in that tag and come back to the back of the lead. And that just helps secure the lead in place. I mean, clearly you can glue this if you want, but uh, I don't find that essentially necessary. So from here, what I'm going to do is just in sort of open or sorry, flatten out the thread and then just just go through and build up the body of the fly. And, uh, and what I'm looking for here is, is essentially a, you know, a tapered curve sort of scud type pattern or type shape. Um, and you can adjust this however you feel you need to. Um, and I'm not getting overly concerned if I don't cover up all the lead. Um, you do want to cover up most of it, but you know, if there's, bits of you know shades of the lead coming through then that doesn't really matter because once you finalize the pattern um and stick some uv over the top of that you actually get a, a good effect it, it sort of creates enhances the translucency of the pattern because it looks like it's you know it's sort of the insides of the bug sitting in there so just uh just working that up and down just creating the the shape that i want um you know, adjusting the thickness or the flatness of the thread as necessary. Might just come back and put a few more turns at the back here and then come forward. You know, this is all gone sideways. Here we go. And then just bring that forward. And then once I'm happy with the shape, I'm just come in my whip finisher and I'll whip finish a couple of turns just behind the eye. You need to leave a little bit of space just behind the eye, not a huge amount, but uh, you know, sort of a half an eye to an eye's length behind the eye of bare hook um, to finish off the fly later. So that's the underbody done, pretty straightforward, and you just build up a taper however you like. From here, I'm going to colour up the underbody. Um, I'm just using Copic markers. Just Copic markers, and for this fly, I'm using a dull ivory. And, uh, and then a mustard. And so what I'll do is I'll come in first with the dull ivory and I'm just gonna just do some dabs here and there just to give it some dark points. You don't have to go to town. You can use whatever colors you like, whatever suits your particular location. Um, once I've done that dull ivory, I'll come in and sort of fill in some of these gaps with the mustard color. I don't have to necessarily do all the thread. You don't have to completely color it up. You can leave some of that, uh, some of that woolly nylon open. So once I've done that, then the next step is to essentially do a coat of UV resin, whatever UV resin is your preference. 
Um, and I'm not going to bore you by having, making you sit there and watch me do UV resin, but, uh, but that's basically what you do, cover the UV. So moving on to one that I've sort of prepared, this, is, uh, this becomes the underbody of the fly. Coated UV, coloured up, ready to go. Now, what I tend to do is orientate the hook right up high into the jaws. So I've got some good, some better access to, to the back of the, the hook here. <clears throat> and, uh, and then make sure that's secure. So the next thing is, uh, is silk. Now you can try using other types of threads, but, but silk is, a silk thread is really what you're after. Um, it'll give a better effect um, and, and sort of fluffs up really nicely. So this stuff I'm using is just YLI silk thread. This one is, uh, so it's YLI silk thread 100 and it's number 241. It's an ambery sort of a color. All right, so with that, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in, I'm gonna catch this silk thread in at the back of the pattern. Now, I'm just gonna secure this thread so that it's controlled. I'm not necessarily trying to make that part of the pattern. So as long as it's tied in and secured, we're good to go. The next part becomes a little bit more fiddly and I apologize if my fingers get in the way here, but um, that's just the way it is. What I'm going to do is I'm gonna overwrap that silk thread over the body, but I'm also going to include a, a, a spacer if you like. <clears throat> so I'm using, just a, a piece of uh, probably vinyl pipe or tubing. It's about two, maybe three mil in diameter. Um, and what I've done is just an inch long piece or an inch and a half length piece. And at the back end, I've just cut a slip into the into one little end. And I'll explain how I'm gonna use this now. So what I'm gonna do is I orientate the pattern upside down, the hook upside down. And then I'm using this split here, I'm just gonna feed that in and around the back of the, the hook, hopefully. And that's just basically going to give me something to bite onto, there we go. So I've orientated and I'm feeding the hook, uh, sorry, this piece of tube in underneath the body of the fly. From here, I'm gonna do a few turns right at the back here just to secure it. Now these may or may not come into play with the rest of the pattern, depends on how it goes with the UV, but, but they need to be there to secure that piece of tubing. And then just in sort of open turns, open wraps, I'm gonna do a few turns up the fly, just orientating this piece of tube on the belly. till it's sort of locked in place. And then I'm just gonna sort of add this in as much as I feel I need to. And you can sort of vary this and so that you've got some nice sort of ribs across the back um, and you feel that you've sort of covered up enough. We'll call it there for the time being. Right, so once I've done that, I'm just gonna simply lock off this silk, a couple of turns there and a whip finish. Two, three and then trim that silk away. Now, if I need to, from here, what I can do is just manipulate that tubing to make sure it's running along the belly of the fly. And then the next step is UV resin, and I will show you this because there's a couple of things that you probably need to conceal when you're doing it. So the finer that you can get the UV thread, the UV resin, the better, so a nice thin resin is better. When I start to apply this, I like to try and apply it so that the fly is orientated upside down. That stops or avoids too much of the UV resin seeping up this thread past the bottom of the fly itself. You'll see what I mean. So I'm gonna start on the far side, on your side. And I'm just gonna orientate enough so I can get to it. And then I'm just gonna be placing some, a run of UV resin, thin layer, along the side of the fly. I don't want to come up onto where the tubing is, if, if at all possible, or we'll avoid that if possible. And I just need enough there to start to lock that thread back down on the body. All right, do that, give it a hit with the light. Okay. 
few seconds to set it, and then I'll come over and keeping the fly in the reasonable sort of downward orientation, I'm going to do the far side. And it's the same principle. I'm really just trying to get a coat of resin on here to lock that thread down onto the body. Um, it doesn't have to be particularly thick at this point. It just needs to be enough to, to set it. So I'll run that little resin along this side, taking care not to slip too far off onto the tubing. And then again, hit this with UV light. And set that. <clears throat> and then once I'm happy with that, then what I'll do is I'll come over and I'll tidy up the top and I can be a little bit thicker here and get a little bit more um, shape or you know, sort of smooth it up a bit. A little get bit more of a coat onto it. And then Once I'm happy that, uh, that I've got what I want on here, dabble on the eye, uh, on the head there. That'll do. Then it's just a matter of setting that. And then we move on to the next step. So once the resin's set, Make sure we get all the spots. All right. <clears throat> so from here, I'm going to just take a, a scalpel, sharp knife, orientate the fly over the top, and then just coming in and running the blade through that thread down the center of that tubing and just taking my time and I'm just nipping all those threads and making sure that they're separated. Right, once I've done that, then I'm just supporting the fly. I'm just going to tease this tube out and away from the pattern and then come in with a brush and sort of rough up and go to town, fluff up and tease away the ends of those fibres. And you can take as long as you like to this. You can really fluff it up or you can sort of leave them a little bit, uh, you know, sort of twisted together so that they perhaps form more or create better representation of legs, if that's, uh, if that's what you want to do. And then just teasing that away. So from here, I can then come in if I feel I need to. I can just do some minor trimming maybe create a little bit more straggly effect, trim away anything that I really don't like uh, or I feel is sort of too long and we'll thin it out even if that's, if that's what you want to do. But, uh, but then that's basically it. Now this down the back here where the thread was uh, originally caught on to start locking in, that'll come away. Probably be easier once it's out of the vise. But, um, and if it doesn't, then it's just another piece of the, it's another leg hanging there and, um, and it'll work itself off eventually. There we go, nearly got it. And you might find, depending on what your UV resin skills are like, that, uh, that that particular piece sort of gets bound to the hook. That doesn't really matter. Um, it'll, it'll either fray up or it'll just sit there as another piece of coloration. But uh, that's how I do my silky scud. And that's the sort of effect you get out of the scud. All right, so that's it. If you try it, uh, please let me know how it goes, particularly if you go fishing with it. Um, thanks very much for watching. Tight lines.